Hello guys, welcome to the first video, like the actual 3D video of this month. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look into a very interesting question. So let's get to it. Yesterday, I was reading the comments from the video that I posted and uh, I was really, really, again, um, I'm really thankful for all of the support, guys. Thank you. It's it's really good to be back. Uh, all of your messages are really heartwarming and I'm, I'm happy to be here uh, sharing more 3D knowledge with you. So, uh, one of our good friends in the channel, uh, Burhanuddin Tinwala, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, I'm probably pronouncing it completely wrong, uh, but he asked, is there a way in which you can save multiple textures into the same file to save some space? And that, my friend, is a little bit of an advanced question, but yes, we can do it, and I am going to show you how. Now, before we jump into the actual how to do it, I just want to take a quick moment to explain what this is. Because some of you might be wondering, I don't understand, what do you mean by different channels in, a, in an image, right? Uh, give me just one second here. I was listening to some music, but it's way too loud. So, uh, yeah, uh, here I have this uh, photo. It's an abandoned alleyway or like an old alleyway in Korea, I believe. And uh, one thing that I need you to understand for all of these things that we're going to be doing is that every single image in the in the digital world has channels, uh, typically typically three channels, R, G, and B. So if you combine red pixels, green pixels, and blue pixels at different uh, intensities, you're going to get colors. So if you have like all of those pixels at complete intensity, you're going to have white. And if you have all of those pixels at no intensity, you're going to have black. And every single hue in the color palette is going to be in between, like varying intensities. And some of you might already know the limits that we use are 0 to uh, 255. So if you have 255 red, 0 green, and 0 blue, that's pure red. If you have 355 green, you have like complete green, no red, no blue. And again, every single color that you can imagine is going to be an in-between of those RGB values. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about this is that we can actually access each individual channel. If I go here into the channels options of uh, Photoshop, I can go into the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And by combining these three channels, as you can see, we're going to get this image. Now, here's a cool trick. If I were to grab, for instance, the pixels of the red channel, I'm just going to grab all of them uh, with my marquee tool, and then go to my move tool and move them one pixel to the side, or maybe two pixels to the side, what I'm doing is I'm pretty much splitting those pixels, those red pixels, two, two pixels away from where they're supposed to be. So if I turn this on, you're going to see that we get this sort of like chromatic aberration effect. It's very common in sci-fi uh, movies and in games where you want to have this sort of like realistic effect because cameras, when they bend the light and, and like uh, get the... the pixels into the sensor or the sensor into the pixels, whatever, they, they sometimes make this mistake, especially old cameras. So um, you're going to get this sort of effect. So usually, I mean, two pixels is way, way too much. So I'm just going to move the one pixel, but then I'm going to grab the blue channel. I'm going to move the one pixel to the other side. So now, uh, or maybe like this one, two pixels. So now you can see how we get this banding where since the pixels are no longer matching, uh, the image is not displayed as properly as it should. Now, since it's only a pixel difference, you're still going to see the whole thing, but you're going to see a little bit of a fringe here and there, and especially in some, on some uh, places, it's going to be a little bit more uh, obvious. Now, if I were to completely move this away, then it's going to be like a ghost, and we're going to see just like a yellow image on this side, which is, of course, not what we want. So when would you want to do this sort of like chromatic aberration tip? Um, that's one little, little uh, technique that you can just, just grab with the channel, move it a couple of pixels to the side. Uh, it is going to blur, blur it out a little bit because you're going to lose uh, focus or sharpness, uh, it's going to look cool. So uh, something that you might want to use. One uh, quick trick that you can use is just duplicate the first layer. I actually already did here. And then on this one, just create a mask. So I'm just going to create a mask. I'm going to paint it uh, pure black. Let's grab like something like this. So paint the mask pure black. And that pretty much, or actually, no, this does not work because this is doing it to the whole image. So yeah, uh, forget about it. We, we would need to export this image and then use it as a mask and just have this effect like on the borders. That's something that we can do. But I don't want to go into the into the Photoshop uh, tricks here. We'll do that in another time. I want to go into substance. So what happens in substance? Well, I have this character right here. His name is Dor, Dor the Dwarf. Dor as in a door, just without a no, it's D-O-R. Uh, he's one of my characters from the D&D campaigns a long time ago. And I was doing this bust as an exercise. I think this is very old, like five years old or something. And um, I'm using it now for some grooming uh, teaching that I'm doing. I'm doing like hair techniques and stuff. So we're going to be using Door as our model. Uh, but we're going to use him today for the channels that we're going to be exporting. 
So normally, when you export something, let's say I'm going to export our uh, textures to render in V-Ray or in Arnold or whatever, I would go here to export textures. And on the templates, I would select Arnold AI standard. And if I were to go to the list of exports, it's going to tell me what's going to be exported out, right? So it says, hey, we're going to export a base color, we're going to export an emissive, we're going to export a height map, a metalness map, a normal map, and a roughness map. So that's six maps. Uh, Targa at 4k resolution and that's a little bit of, uh, of an overkill, right? That's a little bit too much So one thing that we can do and it goes back to the original question We can actually be a little bit smarter in how we save these files to minimize the uh, Performance impact because nowadays polygons are no longer like the main source of conflict in the engines that problem has kind of already been solved. You still need to optimize and everything, but it's it's no longer such a such a difficult thing to um, to properly uh, optimize. Nowadays, textures is the is the big bottleneck because in order to have like really high resolution assets, we need high resolution textures, and those weigh quite a bit because we haven't found a way to save all that color information, the maps, the different like uh, yeah, the roughness, uh, normal everything in in an, in an efficient way. So this is one of the ways they do it, and actually. Uh, I'm not, of course, the one who invented this. Uh, the guys at Unreal, they started doing it like a couple of years ago with this little uh, option here called the Unreal Engine 4 Packed uh, Setup. And what the Unreal Engine 4 Packed Setup does, it's a very interesting thing. It would export, instead of having those six textures, remember we had six textures, it would now only export four textures. Base color, emissive, normal, and then this special texture called Occlusion Roughness Metallic, which has three textures baked into one. How do they do this? Well, we're going to need to go into the inner functions of, uh, of the Substance Engine to show you. So what's happening is this right here. If you go to the output templates, you're going to be able to see all of the different outputs that you can get out of, uh, out of a, a Substance um, from the get-go, and you can actually create your own uh, output. So I'm going to be creating my own outputs from scratch to show you how we can create some important textures that are going to allow us to uh, optimize our size. So I'm going to create a new one, and I'm going to call this it's called this next toot optimized. Okay, and now I need to ask myself, okay, what map do I need to get it out of a substance? Of course, I need a color map. I need to make sure that I get a, a color. And from all of these maps right here, I'm gonna be able to export a specific channels that I might wanna add. So I want, I know that I want an RGB channel, which is an, an RGB map that has the color information of my object. So I'm gonna select this one right here, RGB plus A. So what's the A? What's the A stand for? It stands for alpha. So it is gonna have an alpha channel, something that we do not have here. If we go back to, to Photoshop, we don't have an alpha channel, but if we can create one, and that's the transparency. Some special images, not every image, JPEGs, for instance, don't have alpha channels. But PNGs, targets, TIFFs, uh, EXRs, like there's, I think EXRs do. Uh, there's a lot of more like advanced images that you don't normally share, uh, but can be used um, that will have transparency. And you know what transparency is. If you use WhatsApp and you send the stickers, well, stickers have transparency. That's why they're like cut out. So I am gonna use this channel. And now I'm gonna copy one very cool thing here from uh, from our element. I'm gonna go to, let's say the V-Ray or the, the Arnold one. Here we go. I'm gonna copy all of these things. Control C, I'm gonna go to ours, and I'm just gonna say Control B. Because what this uh, little things do, these are flags, and, and they will call uh, certain parts of your objects, in this case, the, num the name of the mesh, the name of the texture set, which is your material, and then it will add the base color. And if we were to have a UDEM, it would add the UDEM uh, thing. You already know what the UDEMs are, and if you don't, check out our past videos. We have some very cool stuff there that you can check and learn. Now, I definitely want this to be a, a type of, uh, image that allows me to have RGB and alpha. So I'm going to go for Targas, which I believe are really, really good. And uh, 8 bits is fine for now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my base color right here, my base color channel, and I'm going to drop it on the base color, on the RGB channels. So now whatever I have painted as my base color, which is what we normally see here, this thing, it's going to be, it's going to be baked out as the base color for my map. And we still have the alpha channel free. so. What can we get there? Well, the alpha channel is just one channel. It's not like the RGB channel that has three colors. So we're only gonna be able to uh, implant or input an image or a, a channel that has a black and white value. And which one of those would that be? Well, for instance, ambient occlusion. We can grab our ambient occlusion map and get it into the alpha channel. 
That way, this little uh, image, this first image that we're outputting, will have all of the information for our color. We need the three colors, of course, to have the information for the color. And I will be using one extra channel that's already there on the target file to save an extra channel if I may need it. Because you might just want to save this thing out, and if you don't need it, you just don't use it. But it's going to be there, so it's, it's, an, it's, an, it's a good thing to have, especially in like in Unreal and Unity, where you can decide whether you want to use the alpha or not. Uh, having the color and the alpha just as an option is always a good thing. So now let's add another RGBA. And in this one, I am going to copy the exact same thing, but I'm going to use the normal. Of course, we need a normal map. We know that most more often than not, we're going to have or we're going to need a normal map. So we're going to call this normal. And from all of this, guys, we're just going to grab the normal. Uh, and actually, no, I, I think from this, guys, we need to grab, let me just go back here. Yeah, we need to grab this uh, converted maps, okay? So why the converted map? Because remember, sometimes we draw things with height here inside of a substance painter, and that height information is going to be converted into normal map information once you export. And the reason why it gets converted is because, is because we're using this setup right here. So depending if, we're, if you're going to be using DirectX or OpenGL, you're going to decide which one, wants, which one of this ones you might like. Since I personally use uh, DirectX, DirectX more often, I'm going to use DirectX. And I'm just going to say RGB channels. Now, we still have one alpha channel here. However, I personally don't like using uh, alpha channels on the normal map because the normal map is very important and sometimes the alpha channels do affect a little bit. So if I were to add, I don't know, something like, um, uh, let's say, like the roughness map or the opacity map, uh, it might get tricky, okay? One place where opacity, for instance, plays a very nice role is here, up here on the base color. And I actually think I'm going to, uh, I might get it there. No, I'll get it somewhere else. You'll see where. So if I were to have an opacity mask, which is just a black and white mask, I might want to have that into an alpha channel just so that I can select that from there. So I'm going to grab another RGBA, and this is where things get uh, fun. Uh, I'm going to go back to the Unreal, Unreal Engine 4 pack, and I'm going to copy this guy right here. This, again, this is all flax. And you can see that this one is telling me, hey, I'm exporting the occlusion map, the roughness map, and the metallic map into a single file. How does it do it? Well, it's actually very easy. The only thing you need to do is grab each specific one, one of this. And as you can see, they're ordered. So first, the MP occlusion, which we already have up here. So I'm actually going to clear this channel. And I'm just going to drop the ambient occlusion down here. And I'm going to say, get it into, uh, or sorry, I'm actually not going to do this. I'm going to delete this guy. Let me just copy this because this is not the one that we need. We need this one, RGB, R plus G plus B plus A, so that the channels are split. There we go. So now I just get the ambient occlusion into that red channel and say gray channel. I get the uh, roughness into the green channel, gray channel, and I get the metallic into the blue channel. And we're going to say gray channel because that's just a gray channel. All of these three channels, the RG and B, are just black and white values that we're going to be able to extract information from. And finally, I mean, we don't have an opacity on this guy, but I would probably include the opacity in the in the alpha channel on this material because this material is all black and white maps. So it's very, it would be better for me to keep it that way so that everything is just black and white and I'm not mixing any colors. Now over here, some, some people like to add the opacity mask to the to the color channel. You can also do that. I mean, it's, it's a completely... Um, completely optional. And one thing you're going to you're going to see later on, I've had some studios that have uh, a very specific setup, not like this on real engine 4 setup. They actually go for some like different approaches. So if they ever ask you to split your textures or, or group your textures in specific ways, this is what you have to do. You have to go get in here into the export texture tab on the output templates and probably create the template specifically for for them and connect the things that you want. Now, there might be a couple of uh, maps that um, would be very useful for me. One of this is the thickness map, because the thickness, remember, is one of the things that we can use for subsurface scattering so that we know which parts are thin and which parts are thick. So I might want to get this mesh thickness map into the alpha channel of my color. The only thing I would need to add here is I would say base color, and then let's add the word thickness so that I know that there's two maps in this uh, texture that's going to be exported. Um, again, usually normal. I like to keep it clean just to be safe, just to be sure that the normal is working exactly as I intend. And uh, finally, we can have just another RGBA and let's call this uh, emissive. So I'm just going to, again, copy everything here, all the flags, and we're just going to name this emissive. And there we go. And uh, the only thing we need to do is just drag this into the RGB. Emissive is an RGB uh, element. Uh, if you paint the color of the RGB, if you just want the mask, if you just want the mask from the RGB, you can also just uh, get this here. 
And um, I don't know, like, let's see. Oh, you can actually create like masks and set them as specific flags and export those masks into here. So there's a lot of very powerful tools inside of this whole uh, this whole element. So make sure you, you take a, a look at, at how you can use them and it, it will mostly come out when, when people ask you specific things about the, the project, when they want very specific maps, that's when you're gonna be able to, to do this. Uh, here, for instance, I think the only other one that I might want to export might be the height map. Um, but since I'm not going to be using displacement, I probably would skip it. So that's it. I, I would just do this uh, and I would just go back here to the settings, change this to the new setting, which is this next to optimize Targa 4K. Let's select a place. Let's say we're going to go to our uh, usual, uh, usual side. You probably missed this folders. Let's create a new one. Let's call this folder dwarf maps let's select the folder and i'm just going to export now of course even if if you have the emissive on your setup if you don't have an emissive channel nothing's going to be exported and you're, gonna, you're not going to be dealing with any extra maps so in this case as you guys can see i have one map two maps and three maps now the cool thing is it doesn't really matter how many maps you include into a targa, they're always gonna like measure the same thing or, or be the same size in, in file size. So you wanna use all of the channels if you can, that way you're not uh, wasting any space. So as you can see, this normal channel, it only has three channels, right? We don't have the alpha channel, but it's still 48 megs because it's a 4K map. And this one has four maps baked into it and it still has 48K or 48 megabytes. So that's one of the cool things. Now let's just very quickly open. We're about to finish this video, guys. Don't worry. Thank you for, for uh, watching all the way through. And now let's just see what we have. So on the layers, you're not gonna see anything, but in the channels, you're gonna see that the color map has the RGB channels. And um, it seems like it did not export the thickness map for some reason. I will need to double check why that was. But if we go to the occlusion map, we have this. So we have the RGMB. So the red channel is gonna be what the ambient occlusion has. It's the ambient occlusion map. The green channel is gonna be the roughness map, which parts are more shiny and which parts are more duller. And finally, the blue channel is the metallic channel, which in this case, since it's all skin, there's no metallic pieces. But if we had metallic pieces, we will find that information here. Now, I do believe we added another extra thing here and it did not export, did it? What, what did we add it here? Oh, the opacity, but we don't have any opacity either. So even though, I mean, the, the, the channels are properly set up, but they, they don't have any opacity. Now, the only one I'm a little bit uh, concerned about is the thickness because we should have this guy right here. So I think, what am I missing? Mm. What am I missing? There's usually, I think it's export shader parameters. Might that be it? Let's give it a go. Because that should be, oh no, that's just like the information. Yeah, it's really weird because we should have, unless it's a known project and I don't have the thickness. Maybe that's the case. No, I do have the thickness. So we do have the thickness map, but for some reason it's not. Uh, oh, it did update. Oh, no, I don't see any difference though. Let me just double check here real quick. File, export textures again. Let's go to our output templates and the new one that we created here next to the optimized. And uh, yeah, we have the, oh no, my bad. Here we have the the opacity channel. This is a targa, this is a targa, yeah. Actually, this should be a targa, by the way. I missed that one. Which it gets overridden if you select targa over here. Uh, but yeah, let me just double check why this thickness map is not baking. Let's clear the channel. should be baking there's usually another another option here but i'm not seeing it uh, that tells you that it needs to to bake like all of the other maps like let me see if i can go into another uh, output like the like the arno one real quickly Huh, that's weird. I might need to update my substance because I'm a couple of versions behind. Uh, but I'll get back to you guys on that one. Technically, uh, it should get this into the alpha channel. I'm, again, not entirely sure why it's not doing it. But again, this is the answer, guys. If you want to create a specific setup in how to like plug in different channels, this is a very, very good way to do it. And it will give you a very optimized result. Another thing I could do is instead of having this one right here, I might create another texture and then just get like an RGMB and just get three more and get like the... Uh, like the hide map or something else to just, again, save space. This is a very 
uh, it's not very advanced, but it's like an advanced setup where you want to save a lot of space on the texture files. And, well, this is it. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to continue with more 3D, guys. Again, leave me your comments. Leave me your, um, uh, anything that you might want to learn. Uh, tell me what you want to see throughout this month, and I'll be happy to continue with that. We're still working on the premium courses, which should be released uh, fairly short. It's still a little bit, a little bit, a little while again. Um, um, far because we're gonna be uh, I, I lost some time last week of course and I need to uh, continue working on that but make sure you use this weekend to practice learn something new learn uh, challenge yourself and try to learn a new tool a new software a new technique and you'll see how fast you grow as a 3d artist and that's it guys I'll see you back tomorrow bye bye